you know, when I was younger, being healthy and being fit just came so naturally to me. And as I've gotten older, um, I've definitely feel like I'm overweight. I can definitely tell that I can't keep a consistent schedule of working out. And I think a large part of that is just because a, I don't have a lot of time to think about what kind of workouts I'm going to do, what kind of activities I'm going to do. And B, I don't have a lot of time to do things. I've got a full-time job. I'm working on this YouTube channel. I'm also a husband and a father. And those things just occupy so much time in my life that if I really want to focus on being active and being healthy, I have to think of ways to get around those two constraints. And so using this as an opportunity to basically use my coding, um, I've thought about a way that I could automate a lot of the processes here. So the plan is this. I'm going to make a list of activities that I enjoy doing. And then using Python, I'm going to automate a random choice selector of what activity I'm going to do and it's going to assign a day in the week with that activity and that's going to push it to my calendar and my task list for me to do for that day. This should reduce the amount of decision fatigue that I have and as long as I stick to this sort of whatever my Python code says, I should be able to get some good exercise in every day and ultimately help with that goal of becoming healthier, losing weight, being more active. So this is sort of an interesting trick. I'm going to jump into the computer here and show you exactly how I set up the code and how I got it to automate into my calendar. I want to walk you through what all of the different tools that I use to do this project with. The first is building out the code that will assign an activity to a day. Um, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, it did take me some time to figure out um, but with the help of like Bard, which pretty much verbatim wrote the activity scheduler class for me, and I didn't change almost anything to this. So that was pretty much very, that was the most useful part, I would say. And Google Bard can be hit or miss. A lot of times it doesn't have the proper context for the build I'm trying to make. So although it's a really good idea for, um, helping me maybe debug it's not always the best but in this instance it was a really nice way for me to just get the activity scheduler basically because i just told it i want you to assign an activity to a day but i don't want it to repeat and this is what it generated and this is almost verbatim what i used for my activity scheduler so here's the actual code to the activity scheduler basically we first authenticate ourselves as the user this is pretty straightforward because I'm already logged into Google. And then we have our class activity scheduler here with two functions. And we have the init function, which is really straightforward. We just have the activities that we pass through the activity scheduler. We have the days of the week. And then we have our scheduled activities that we store in this empty variable here, empty dictionary. The second function is really a set of three if statements to make sure that one, we're not trying to set an activity to a day of week that isn't in this day of week here. So in my instance, Sunday would be an invalid day of the week. The second if statement is to make sure that we're not going to schedule an activity to a day of the week that already has something scheduled to it. The third one is we are gonna make sure that we're not going to schedule the same activity in the same week. So for instance, on Monday and Tuesday, if I did biking and swimming, I wouldn't see biking or swimming on Thursday or Friday, for instance, nor Wednesday. So it has to have a whole bunch of different activities to attach to this. And so that just makes sure, hey, there's no more activities available to schedule. So you have to at least pass in one, two, three, four, five, six, in my instance, for this to work. If all of those instances are met, then the activity takes a random choice of the available activities. 
and we set that activity to a day of the week and then we return that activity at least for this function here excellent so we now have our activity scheduler and this is great right we can now assign days of the week with an activity but that's only half of the solution here i still need a way for that activity and the schedule to somehow get auto populated um, on my phone so i don't have to come open this up click it look at it see which day it is right i'd rather it just make the schedule and auto populate on my calendar or task list that I have on my phone in the app. So I use a lot of Google products, so this shouldn't be too difficult. And I'll show you sort of the solution I did here. This is where Bard also came in handy, but kind of less so than helping me write out the activity scheduler, because although it made me aware of G spread, which I wasn't initially, um, other than that, it didn't really seem to help me. It wanted me to set up an API with the Google Cloud platform and all that. And I, I just, that was just too much work. I didn't want to dedicate that much time to, my, to, to this project, right? So another part of Google Authenticate is you can pass through your credentials, your default credentials, since I'm the current user here. And through that, we are able to set up a connection with G Spread we're able to create a new spreadsheet and we then open that Google Sheet by connecting to the first sheet in our workbook. Now that we're connected to our Google Sheet and we're in the first sheet of our workbook, it's time to set the actual activities. In my instance, I'm going to do yoga, zone two training, VO2 max training, upper body lift, lower body swimming, biking, running, boxing class, and then I also said, every every once in a while, I want two days for a rest. My goal here is, one, I've got a lot of different varying activities. This is my hope, is that I'm not just going to be like, oh, I got to hit the gym and lift weights again today, or, oh, I got to go for a run again today. I've already built in some variability. So I've chosen things that I enjoy doing regularly. And I've just said, let's schedule it out so that I'm doing something different every day, but it's something that I enjoy doing every day. We then initialize our scheduler with the activities that we've assigned in this list here. And then we're going to go through each day of the week where the scheduler has scheduled an activity to. And we're then going to append the day of the week and the activity to the activity schedule list. So we'll have a list of tuples. We're going to then define our cell range that we're going to update in our worksheet. And then we're going to pass our tuples to that range. So in this instance, we're going to start at A2 and B7. And why that is, if you can imagine, the A column will be the day of the week. The B column will be the activity. And we're starting on A2 because I'm going to need headers above those two uh, pieces of information to define the columns for later. So now I have the activity sheet updated. And something I want to point out here is it's very simple. If I were to run it again, it would automatically update these cells. So this is an activity sheet that I really don't need to open anymore unless I want to add in other things, but it could cause errors with the code or it could update something that I make changes here. So this activity sheet is really just a placeholder for the third and final step, which is to automate once this becomes populated, it needs to push it to another app that I use regularly to plan out my day, like a calendar or a task list. In this instance, I'm going to push it to a task list because I use that a lot more often with Google, um, which isn't too difficult to do, actually. Uh, one of the main things that I've done, I'm not going to, we could code this nest technically. I could open up like a Google Cloud console, grab all the APIs for Google Drive Sheets, Colab, grab an API for Google Tasks. But that's a little heavy on the code, and I don't think it's totally necessary to do that. So in this instance, picking the right solution to match the level of effort that I want to put into this project was really important to me. And so what I landed on was just using Zapier.
you'll get something that looks like this and that's it. I've updated a worksheet and I've also assigned activities to my schedule. And so I wanted a way to connect my activity sheet, which now looks like this. And you can see my activities here, my day of the week here that's been updated from the scheduler. But I wanna connect this to my Google Tasks. And again, Google says that I should start a Google Console project and connect the APIs and all that. But I wasn't about to go out and learn that, so I needed a lower code solution for this problem. And I ended up just using Zapier. And it works okay. It's not, I mean, they make it as intuitive as possible, but it can be kind of clunky, I would say. Um, but in this instance, all I'm trying to do is say, hey, every time you see the activity column of this worksheet update, I want you to trigger an event that then auto populates these tuples into my tasks. And that's exactly what happens. And that's basically it. We've automated from the point of scheduling our activities to a day to then pushing it all the way to a, my phone app that I, I connect to Google Tasks via my phone. And I just look, all right, this is the activity I'm supposed to do today. And that really reduces the amount of decision fatigue in my life. And hopefully it adds enough variability to my workouts and my, my exercise routines that I won't ever get bored and my body will really start to notice the benefits of moving differently each day. And hopefully we should be able to see some results. The next step in this series would be to now start to track um, the, you know, the effectiveness of my workouts such as like, am I losing weight? Is my resting heart rate getting better? You know, what are my blood levels like? So that might be something else for a later video. I'd have to figure out how to collect and aggregate all that data into one place where I could do a data science project with. But uh, I really wanted to share this because this is, I think, more, at least in the health and fitness realm, this is one of the few things that I actually do use day to day, even more so than an algorithmic trading strategy, because this actually works. Um, whereas the trading strategies would most likely lose me money. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting or useful about how I went about building this project. Um, I'll keep you updated if you're interested on exactly how these, uh, exactly how this workflow works for me. Like I said, I think it really decreases the level of decision fatigue throughout the day. So I don't have to think about what kind of workouts am I going to do? What kind of activities am I going to do? I just have it already auto populated and I just do that work. Anyway, thanks YouTube and I will see you in the next video. Bye.